Okay. Isaiah 55 says, let's start at Isaiah 55. Wait and listen. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters, and who has no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money, without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. I like the Amplified. It says there's all different kinds of shades of meaning that comes out of the original languages that they've translated. So it will say a bit more than, than other translations would then it says, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness, the profuseness of spiritual joy. Incline your ears, submit and consent to the divine will and come to me here and your soul will revive and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercy promised to David. Okay, so he says, wait. So, when in the Bible, I mean, in Isaiah 55 specifically, in the original word, you, you see it in the King James Version, it says, ho. Oh. And that word can be translated as something like, ah <laughs> or aha <laughs> or even oh it's like an ex just a, a, a sound of expression so it's more like people say oh that men would praise god okay so oh those who are thirsty okay but there's many places in the bible specifically more in like isaiah 40 where it speaks of waiting on god now the the Amplified translated it as wait, but it says wait and listen. So this and this, it says to me, give your attention. Or your focus. Or I would like to say an intense focus. Okay, so wait and listen. Wait on the Lord. So it's where you are eager to hear what he has to say. It's to such an extent that nothing else matters right now. Okay, to such an extent that, you know, it's like when someone is really, really focused on something. Okay, like in, in childbirth. The focus is to get that baby out. Nothing else matters right now. <laughs> so don't come with stories. Don't bring vital information. <laughs> this is not the time to share it. <laughs> okay. So there's an intense focus. Okay. This is what's happening right now. Okay. So in, in certain places, like Paul says... Um, he says, I'm in, I think it's in, in Philippians. He says, he says, I'm in travail again or in birth pangs again until Christ be formed in you. No, it's Galatians. Because he was speaking about the Galatians church that turned away to another, to another gospel. He says, yeah, it's like he's, he's intensely focused on this thing. He's like groaning for this thing. So it's when, when we wait and listen for God, we, are, we give our attention. But it's like we go and seek him out. And even almost like wait in ambush. It's like... Where do you wait for God? You wait for God where he may be found. So if he's going to be in this house, you don't wait for him in that house. If he's going to go on this road, you wait for him on this road to find him, not 
you know, like a procession, your optoch or whatever, you know, like you, you know it's going to come past. You know, like when your sports team won the World Cup and they, they do a parade in the streets and everyone is waiting, you know, for them to come so that they can wave and scream and then they have to go home because it's past. Okay, so they're waiting for something to happen that they're expecting is going to happen. It's an expectant waiting. Okay, so wait and listen. Everyone who is thirsty... Come to the waters, you has money, no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money. And then he says, uh, verse 2, hearken diligently to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. So we're talking about the soul now. So, you know, I have circles. So if that's your soul. And that's spirit. And that's body. It's your soul has an intense desire to hear from God. Okay? So the soul realm, if you believe in Jesus and you've received the Holy Spirit, Romans chapter 8 says, God's spirit testifies together with our spirits that we are the children of God. So your spirit have received the Holy Spirit. So where will you find him? Inside you. Is he outside of you? If you look for an outside God, you're going to kind of struggle to find him because he's inside. Okay? So... It, it's not really going to be so effective in hearing what he has to say if your attention is elsewhere than where he is likely to speak. Where is he likely to speak? From within your heart. But how do I know I'm hearing his voice? Let the word of God be full, like heaped up in your heart. Okay? Okay. Let the knowledge of the word of God be stored up in your heart. So when you hear a thought coming from the spirit, it's easy to recognize because it will be according to the word of God. He's never going to betray his own word when he says something. So if you get a thought that says, I want to go steal my neighbor's car, it's 100% not the Holy Spirit talking to you. <laughs> okay, right. So, so you, you believed the gospel. You received the Holy Spirit in your heart. So your spirit has received the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is saved. So now the soul dimension. So this is where you experience emotions. This is where you experience uh, awareness. So, this is where your thoughts are. Now, this can be a canvas reflecting what is in the Spirit of God or reflecting only what your body and the five senses feeds into it. So, we turn our attention on purpose, away from all the input that we get in the world. It doesn't mean that the body is now evil. It doesn't mean that everything that the body, the five senses tells you is wrong. I'm just saying, as your source that you live from, this is the realm where you rule and reign from the spirit. So that means if your soul has been influenced by the Holy Spirit, so your gaze is in that direction, then there's something, the content of what is happening inside here is from God. And there's an energy that's released inside you. And it's the energy that's from the Holy Spirit that can heal the sick. It's an energy that can take you through any obstacle, any situation. Um, 
like Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, we are struck down, but we are not destroyed. We are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. Always bearing in our bodies the same putting to death that the Lord Jesus suffered. So that the uh, life of Christ might be made, might be evidenced in our mortal flesh. So as, despite situations, despite whatever is happening in the five senses realm here to your body, if your soul is feasting, let your soul delight itself in the fatness, speaking of the anointing, speaking of the oil of the Spirit of God. Eat what is good. Let your soul feast on what comes from the Spirit, on what comes from the Word of God, of what God is really saying. It affects your emotions. And from there, you can influence this earth through your body. Otherwise, if you are only listening, completely ignoring what the Word says, what the Spirit says, and you're listening only and reacting only to what your five senses can perceive, then the, the stuff that's inside here will be a reaction to what's happening here. And you will live in fear. And you will live in frustration. And you will always be reacting to what you see. Instead of speaking a word from the Spirit prophetically, changing the, the things that you see by listening to what God is saying. What is God's plan for this? What is God saying about my situation? What is God saying about my country? What is God saying about someone's illness? What is God saying about this and this? When we regard the word, regard what the Spirit says, and that is the influence on our heart, from a heart in fellowship with Him, we can speak a word that has the power to transform a situation. Okay? On this side... Your body perceives, you see with your eyes, all kinds of threats. So what do you do? <laughs> Most people just get negative and start repeating what they see. And now their soul starts being influenced by what they are saying about the situation. And we kind of reinforce a negative situation constantly and we even make it worse all right so what you think and what you say matters so man it's i hope it's gonna go faster from now on because i have a lot to say and i'm not even in the past the introduction okay Let's just read on it. I, I believe it will get, get easier. And then Siri Lippen it can work and Jesus nam dank hier. Okay. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul will revive. So we seek him out. He says, wait, listen. He says, incline your ear. Listen. It's not only hearing, it's hearing with intent. It's hearing with intense focus. And your soul will revive. Revive means life manifests in your soul. So life coming to your soul. If you listen to what the Spirit says and what the Word says. All right. Verse 6, seek, inquire for, require the Lord while he may be found. Okay, I'm not going to seek him if he's not here. But since he's here, we can seek him. Okay, so seek him while he may be found. Claiming him by necessity and by right, call upon him while he is near. Verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord, and he will have love, pity, and mercy for him. And to our God, for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. So, there are certain thoughts 
that that's coming in the mind of man. Here's the mind. Okay, there's certain thoughts that comes in the mind of man when the Holy Spirit isn't the one dictating the thoughts. There's certain thoughts that are not God's thoughts. Okay, so he says, and the, the source of those thoughts comes from this five senses realm. Okay, so there are, how can I put it, wicked thoughts, unrighteous thoughts. And it's not always just the ob obvious stuff that's unrighteous and wicked. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 says, Those who are according to the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. King James Amplified says, Set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 6, the mind of the flesh, so the flesh as a, as a mind, the mind of the flesh, that means now this guy is only influenced by input from, from the touch, feel, see realm, five senses. Okay. The mind of the flesh, and it says in the Amplified, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit is death. That's death. Okay. The mind of the flesh, sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, not leads to death, not causes death, it is death. Why? Because it cuts us off from fellowship with the Spirit because it blinds us to the things that the Spirit is saying, to the things that the Word is saying. So there's two influences that does that, mind of the flesh. One is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, chapter 3 verse 15, and we know we've, we've spoken about this many times. He says, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts and minds. So there's a veil, can't see, can't hear, whenever Moses is read. I thought Moses was a holy man of God. Yes, Moses is a holy man of God. But what Moses wrote is to be interpreted to, to point to Jesus and not to point to me. Because Jesus himself said in John chapter 5, verse 39, speaking to the Pharisees, he says, you search the scriptures diligently and you suppose that you have life, life through the scriptures. But the scriptures testify about me, Jesus. But you would not come to me that you might have life. Okay, so the scriptures testify about Jesus. So the word can be found in the scriptures. But there are those who without the Holy Spirit try to interpret the scriptures and they don't find the word. He says, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, the letter kills, but the spirit makes alive. So if I even read the scriptures without the Holy Spirit and I have a sense and reason of even of the scriptures without the Holy Spirit, it is death. The letter kills, but the spirit makes alive. So the spirit with the word testifies and reveals Jesus and shows his character and his spirit and his goodness and everything that he has done. It shows him to you. It reveals more and more of Jesus because Jesus revealed the Father. No one has ever seen God, John 1 verse 18. But the Son has come to declare Him, to reveal Him. So our eyes need to be on the Son so that we can know the Father. If we're not looking at the Son, we're not going to see a true reflection of who the Father is. Hebrews chapter 1, he says, uh, He is the express image of the unseen God. The visible represent representation of the invisible. Same thing in Colossians chapter 1. He says, He is 
he says exactly that. He is the visible representation. John chapter 14. If you have seen me, Philip, you have seen the Father. So if you see Jesus, you see a visible representation of the unseen God, Father. Same in 1 John chapter 4. No one has ever seen God, but when we love one another, God is known because God is love. Okay, so unless we have someone showing us this way, getting through this veil, there is no way of knowing God. There's no way of seeing Him and recognizing Him. If even we are focused on the Scriptures, but without the Holy Spirit showing us what the Scriptures really say, there's no way of knowing Him. John chapter 1. He came unto His own, but His own received Him not. But to as many as did receive Him or recognize Him, gave He power to become sons of God, as many as believed on His name, who owe their birth not to the flesh, but to God. They are born from above or born from God. Okay. So now, he says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous his thoughts. So if there's a wicked way, uh, a wicked way and an unrighteous way in me, I need to forsake it. If there's a wicked thought or an unrighteous thought, I need to forsake it. And I need to turn to the Lord. What will I find? He will have love, pity, and mercy for him. Okay? And to our God, so it's, we turn to, to, to God, and he says, and he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. So how do we receive a pardon from God? How do we get forgiveness for everything that we've messed up? Simple, I turn. From his side at the cross, he has already paid the price. He has already been the lamb that was sacrificed for the sin of the world that completely fulfilled every ritual of the law. He was the sacrifice that completely fulfilled everything that the law spoke about. Okay, according to Hebrews chapter 10, where he says, here I am coming to do, to coming to fulfill everything written of me in the volume of the book. So he came it, he fulfilled it, he finished, and it's done. Okay. By dying on the cross, he became the ultimate sacrifice, ending all sacrifices. Romans 10 verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law, the limit at which it ceases to be. That sacrifice is the sacrifice of sacrifices. So now, that sacrifice is the breakthrough. For us to be able to know God. Okay, Hebrews 10 verse 20. He opened up a fresh new living way for us through the power in the blood of Jesus, through the separating curtain, that is, through his flesh. So his flesh became the separating curtain. And because of the cross and his flesh torn apart, we now have access to the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is now inside every person who believes and who has received the Holy Spirit. The Holy of Holies is a spiritual place. And that spiritual place is wherever the Spirit is. And that Spirit is inside every believer. Where do you meet with God? The woman at the well. John chapter 4. Jesus said, give me some water. She says, you don't have a bucket to draw with. He says, if you'd known the gift, you would have asked me to give you some water. And he says, uh, go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She says, you've spoken truly because you've had five and the one you're living with is not your husband. She says, I perceive that you're a prophet. <laughs> so she says, 
Where shall we worship? So Jesus says, the time is coming and is now here when we will worship the Father not on the mountain as the Samaritans said or in the temple as the Jews said. But those who worship God will worship Him in spirit for the Father is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So where's the spirit? It's inside you. Has the Holy Spirit been poured out? Okay, so he's inside you. Okay. Ek is a temple van die heilige geest. Weet jy nie, weet jy nie, jy is a temple. Weet jy nie, weet jy nie, jy is a temple. Okay, for those who don't understand Afrikaans, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So, in the real sense of the word, you are his dwelling place. You are the place where he abides. So, where in your whole system is that in your spirit? So, the Holy Spirit dwells in your unseen spirit part. Now, there can be a veil in your temple where you don't go through and hear what the Spirit is saying and having fellowship with Him in your own Holy of Holies inside your heart. Or there can be no veil and you go, just go in. Depends. What are you hearing and what do you believe? Okay? You can have the Holy Spirit and think that you're not hearing His voice. You can have the Holy Spirit and think that He feels far away from you, but you even have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Then there's people who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you can receive the Holy Spirit. How do I receive it? Just believe in the cross. So how do I enter in and have fellowship with Him? Just believe in the cross. Okay, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 2, he says, I want to know nothing among you. I want to make a display of the knowledge of nothing among you, says the Amplified, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why Him crucified? Because that's the veil that was torn. And if I have if that in the front of my mind, I'm seeing the open door. If I'm seeing the open door, I can go through it. We can go boldly to the throne of grace. We can now go boldly to receive, to, you know, for our conscience to be sprinkled. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21. So, you have access. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have access to full fellowship with Him. Just use your access. How do you use it? Well, wait on the Lord. Intense focus. Seek Him. Seek Him while He can be found. Gaze. Put your gaze upon Him. So, we need to... Our unrighteous and our wicked thoughts, we need to let go. The mind of the flesh, we need to let go. Our sense and reasoning without the Holy Spirit, we need to let go. What do we need to do instead? Just hear what he's saying, listen, and your soul will revive. Inside the word that the Spirit is speaking to you, it's like there's power in the word. So as your soul soaks up all, the, all this word, and all this energy, and all this power, it starts to change, and it starts to, it's like charged like a battery. And now there's some power inside you that starts to radiate from you. Okay? Have you ever seen these little stars that the children put against their ceilings from, from phosphor? Okay? So the other day I put some new, new ones on, on the ceiling for Isabella. So there's these little stars. It's just as big as a plastic thing and there's phosphor inside it. So you charge it by just holding it to the light. And then you switch off the lights and it shines. But there's no source of light inside of it on its own. It soaks up the light because it has the ability to retain light if it's in the light. So guess what? You will shine more the more you spend time in the secret place where the light of God dwells. And the more light is soaked up in your soul dimension, the more you will see. And the more people will see Him in you. 
because in your perspective when you go in you just see the light it's like wow he's amazing now there's nothing else in there than him even you is like not important him but when you come out of that time of intense fellowship people see him in you and you radiate because of the time that you spent in fellowship with him okay all right so knowing him spending time with him because you have access causes people to recognize the life that's inside you causes what is in the soul to change the emotions the awareness the thoughts become the emotions and the awareness and the thoughts of god himself okay so first corinthians 2 i want to know nothing among you except jesus christ and him crucified and then he says and i came among you in fear and trembling and then he says uh and my message verse 4 was not set forth in persuasive enticing plausible words of wisdom okay so like today not very eloquent i don't know <laughs> i fumble and stumble over my own words but that's not what i have to give what i have to give is not human eloquence okay because now he says first corinthians 2 in the amplified he says my message were in the demonstration of the holy spirit and power stirring brackets amplified in the minds of my hearers most holy emotions and thus persuading them so now the more time you spend in you know in in exposure to the holy spirit in fellowship with him the more you soak up what is radiating from him okay and you you come out of that time and you feel like there's something i received something it's like whoa there's something happening here let that create a hunger to go in more instead of thinking yeah i can live on this for a while <laughs> <laughs> let that create a hunger because there's more in there have you ever spoken with someone who spent time with jesus and you walk away from that person you feel like oh, i felt something now I, I you know there's like a residue in your heart you feel like hey i got something from this person have you ever walked out of a service and you feel like my heart feels different after the service okay because the holy spirit is here he's influencing you okay so we want the influence of the holy spirit oh i don't want to go to that church because they just want to influence me of course why else do we have a service okay oh that's just an emotional thing hey don't you want your emotions to be touched by god okay oh that's just psychology well good luck for you to get joy in one service from psychologists I'm not against psychology. I seriously am not. But if you're going to, with principles, it, there might be some certain things that helps you to be less intense and to help you to cope with certain things. But it's not going to give you a source of life and joy. It's not. But it can even help you to get you to a state where you actually can receive the word. So there is a place for it. But what I'm saying is, ultimately what you need is to behold him in righteousness to look to him okay okay i'm totally away from the message let's just get back okay then he says okay let the wicked forsake his way on righteous many's thoughts for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts so this is higher as by on purpose that i drew it higher higher and this is lower but this higher stuff can start radiating from here if you understand that your source is there and not there okay let's go to psalm 25 I hope you're getting something i hope i'm not over explaining something my dad used to just say you know 
don't cloud the argument. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes people can say too much. Okay, so verse 1. Unto you, Lord, do I bring my life. King James. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. So here's my soul. Where is the Holy Spirit? Is inside me. Unto you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. So all my thoughts, all my awareness, all my emotions has to now be focused on him because I am now going into the sanctuary, into the true holy of holies, the place in the spirit where I can have fellowship with him. Unto you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. Okay? Oh my God, I trust, lean and rely on and I'm confident in you. Let me not be put to shame or my hope in you be disappointed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yes, let none who trust and wait hopefully and look for you be put to shame or be disappointed. Let them be ashamed to forsake the right or deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Okay, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his path. Okay, so, so in, in Exodus uh, chapter 33, um, Moses says to God, since I have found favor in your sight, show me your way that I may know you so that I might find favor in your sight. Okay? So uh, Psalm 103, he says, God has shown his ways to Moses and his acts to Israel. So they, they saw his acts, but Moses knew his ways. Okay? And they were always gainsaying, always hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. Okay? But Moses was a high priest, faithful, interceding for them with God. Okay? Right? So we need to know the ways of God. We need to know the thoughts of God. Guide me in your truth and faithfulness and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you, you only, and all together, do I wait expectantly all day long. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercy and loving kindness, for they have been ever from, from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, according to your mercy and steadfast love. Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Okay, so these are the thoughts that God shared with him when he... When he lifts up his soul to the Lord. Okay? So, the same, you know, the old story that we've keep, kept on hammering on, repeating, repeating. Jeremiah uh, 31, Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10, that says, And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Say, so remember not the sins of my youth, Lord, but remember me for your goodness sake. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he instruct sinners in his way. He leads the humble in what is right, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and steadfast love. Even truth and faithfulness are they for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity and my guilt, for they are great. For his name's sake. That's amazing. Okay. Who is the man who reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. Okay, you can read the rest of the psalm. It will bless you. <laughs> okay. Now, let's just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So we lift up our souls to Him. When your soul is focused on the Spirit, your soul starts to experience the Spirit. There's no way for us to experience what is in the Spirit apart from our soul being yielded to the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's where you experience it. All right. Now he says, verse 8, uh, verse 9. On the contrary, as the Scripture says, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared and made and keeps ready for those who love him. So there's things here that I have not seen. 
five senses eyes ear have not heard it has not come into the heart of man so it's not in this realm there's things reserved there for those that love god for those that use the axis the veil has been torn we can we can go in on purpose we seek him out all right yet to us god has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit for the holy spirit see, searches diligently exploring examining everything even sounding the profound and bottomless things of god for what person perceives and knows and understand what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him just so no one discerns or comes to know or comprehend the thoughts of god except the spirit of god do you want to know god's thoughts then you need the holy spirit revealing to you god's thoughts okay otherwise no way for you to perceive it right verse 12 now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world but the holy spirit who is from god given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by god and we are setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom but taught by the holy spirit combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the holy spirit so you need the holy spirit to get what the holy spirit is actually saying in the scriptures it's like a decoder to your satellite dish you can get the signal just with the dish but without the decoder you're not going to get the picture how many people have tried to figure out what the scriptures say how many people have tried by sense and reason without the holy spirit to build doctrines to try and fix this to try and do that and what happens it's just another amplification of human nature people booming up their own importance people trying to gain control over other people people trying to climb the ranks people all do what people do but without the holy spirit the fruit of the holy spirit will not be there there's a difference between preachers saying to people you must have love and peace and joy you must have all these fruit of the holy spirit patience kindness meekness temperance self-control now we try we try and we try and we try mm -hmm. and maybe for one day for one morning we get one kind of right but then the others fail and then you know it's just hard work and it doesn't pay off but in a moment your heart is touched by the holy spirit and suddenly those fruit just flow out of you it, your nature is changed because his his character has influenced the very core of who you are we need to spend time with him we need to turn our attention to him all right the holy spirit okay now he says but the natural non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the spirit of god for it is they are uh, fully meaningless nonsense to him and he's incapable of knowing them progressively recognizing and standing becoming better acquainted with him amplified because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated you need the holy spirit to admit into your heart the gifts teachings and revelations of the holy spirit without the holy spirit it's not going to make sense to the mind of the flesh romans chapter 8 says the mind of the flesh cannot submit itself to god's law indeed it cannot so it is in enmity with god continually withstanding one another all right but the spiritual man this is now the guy whose heart is open to the holy spirit for those who don't know that by now uh, tries all things examines investigates inquires questions discerns all things yet is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one he can read the meaning of everything but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him now he gives the reason 
for now for who has known or understood the mind of the Lord as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge so we just we just read no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God but we have received the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit is searching the deep and profound and bottom of those things of God to reveal those things to us so now he says but we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart referencing also Isaiah 40 that says those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they will run and not get weary okay so if we have put our attention on the Holy Spirit if we come up higher through the open door of the veil through the flesh body that was torn and our soul puts his full attention on everything in the Holy Spirit our soul absorbs everything that it sees there and people can start seeing Jesus inside of us the natural guy cannot understand it he looks at this guy and says like what's up with this weirdo okay he says but the natural man does not admit into his heart because his heart is forever looking this way the gifts teachings and relations of the Holy Spirit it's meaningless nonsense to him okay Man, I wish we had time for Second Corinthians 4. You'll see. Oh. Okay. So now, this guy that's only here, his soul is only there. He's death, sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. He, he can't properly understand this guy. And his judgment of this guy will always be wrong. Okay. That's why you, you can't just look at someone and make a judgment. You don't know what the Holy Spirit has done in that person's life. Okay? Right. And you can, you can be focused here all day long and make a big mess and in a second turn that side. <sighs> what? You can't just judge people. Oh, look at what he's done. You pointing the finger just proved yourself natural. That's a wicked thought. That's an unrighteous thought. Second Corinthians 5, round about verse 14 thereabout. He says, We do not know each other according to the flesh anymore but according to the spirit yes even Christ we did know after the flesh but now we have such knowledge of him that we know no longer after the flesh but after the spirit okay he says the love of Christ moves us and impels us for we are of the opinion that if one died for all, then all died. And he died so that those who live might live for him and no longer for themselves. All right. So the love of Christ moves us. The love of Christ impels us. If the love of Christ impels us, we see people through love. We no longer see one another's faults and call out one another's faults. And with a finger of judgment. Man, there's so many scriptures I want to go to. Isaiah 58 that says, Then shall your light break forth and your and the glory shall, shall rise. He says, When you put from the midst of you every form of false, harsh, and unjust speaking and, and the pointing of the finger in scorn, when you put that away from you, your light will shine. Your light will rise. Okay. When you stop reacting in the flesh and just hear what's the Spirit of God saying? Stop pointing a finger. If we point a finger, I'm proving myself I'm not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit added, added his testimony, Hebrews chapter 10. If you read from verse 14 to 17, it says, 
their sins I will remember no more. Okay. Okay, that's a whole sermon on its own. Sorry if I jump around, but... Ephesians chapter 1. just want to mention this in the light of Psalm 25. In Revelation, if you read Revelation 4, uh, John stood and he saw the lamp stand. And he heard a voice behind him. And he turned around. And he saw a door standing open in heaven. Okay. John 10. I am the door. Okay. So Jesus is the door. Where was the door opened? His body was broken. His flesh body made a new way. Opened. Okay. Okay. And he heard a voice saying, come up higher. So the Spirit of God is calling us. He says, the door is standing open. Come up higher. In your awareness, in your attention, in your focus. Put your, your focus on the, the Spirit, the unseen stuff. Take your focus off of the seen stuff. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 and 18 that we've been speaking about a lot. It says, this light momentary affliction is producing for us an everlasting weight of glory. As we look not to the things which are seen, but to the things which are unseen. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are unseen are deathless and everlasting. Holy Spirit says, come up higher. Lift your gaze. I lift my soul unto you, Lord. Okay? Man, I wanted to go to Matthew 9 now, but let's go Ephesians 1. Verse 17. I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. Thank you. 